Calculation of mean values for a molecule in a gas. A gas of molecules each having mass m is at rest in thermal equilibrium at the absolute temperature T. Denote the velocity of a molecule by V, its three Cartesian components of velocity by Vx, Vy and Vz and its speed by V. Find the following mean values. Suggestions, symmetry arguments, and the equipartition theorem should suffice to answer all these questions without any significant calculation. So there is a hint uh, given in this problem. So the first one is the mean value of Vx. So, uh, well, from symmetry arguments, uh, we have for a molecule, since a molecule uh, can move... So this, we, we have thermal equilibrium, therefore we have random motion of molecules. It can move in plus x and minus x directions with equal probability. It's equally likely to, to go uh, in plus x or minus x direction. This is true at equilibrium. We can directly say that Vx bar should be zero. Now, if I were to formally do this, uh, alternatively, you could say the following. If you want to calculate Vx bar formally, you would have this integral, 1 over the number of particles per volume, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, Vx multiplied with the uh, Maxwell velocity component distribution, C prime e to the minus beta, and Vx squared over 2 dVx, where C prime is some constant. And uh, so this probability of having a value between Vx and Vx plus dVx is given by a constant C or C prime e to the minus beta m Vx squared over 2 dVx that is divided by n, the number of particles per volume. So this is the probability distribution function. It's the Maxwell velocity component of distribution divided by n. So using this probability, I obtain this formal uh, integral. And here Vx is an odd function. e to the minus beta mvx squared over 2 is an even function. Uh, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity odd times even functions should give me 0. So that's an alternative way to come to this conclusion. Part B, what is the average value of Vx square? Well, um, for this one, I can use equipartition theorem. So from equipartition uh, theorem, I have 1 over 2 mv square a bar is equal to 3 over 2 Boltzmann constant times temperature, where v square bar is vx square bar plus vy square bar plus uh, vz square bar. So we have uh, from symmetry, they're all the same. Vx square bar is equal to Vy square bar is equal to Vz square bar. Therefore, uh, V square bar is 3 kT over m implies Vx square bar is equal to kT over m. Or you can say that this is the result from equipartition theorem also because for each independent degree of freedom, I have a contribution to the total energy K2 over 2. So I could alternatively, I could say um, I could just write the following 1 over 2 
2m vx square bar is equal to 1 over 2m vy square bar is equal to 1 over 2m vz square bar is kt divided by m from equipartition theorem. Now let's look at uh, part C. The average value of v square times vx. v square vx average. So what is v square? It is vx square plus vy square plus vz square. Therefore, if you're trying to calculate vx square vx, v, v square vx average, it is vx square plus vy square plus vz square times vx average value and here this gives me the average value of vx cube plus vx vy square plus vx vz square the average value and these are independent of each other so this will be vx cube average plus vx vy square average plus vx vz square average and x, y and z are independent, independent degrees of freedom. Therefore, I can say that vx vy square average is vx average times vy square average which is 0 times kt over m which is 0 and the same thing is true for vz vy uh, vx vx vz square average vx vz square average is vx average vz square average which is 0 times kt over m which is 0. How about vx cube average? vx cube average is found by using the following integral from minus infinity to plus infinity vx cube uh, Maxwell velocity component distribution and here again I have vx cube is an odd function this is an even function so the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity odd times even function gives me zero therefore vx cube average has to be zero uh, so we find that v square vx average value is zero Now let's talk about part D. Uh, what is Vx square Vy average? Well, that I have already encountered. Vx square Vy average is average value of Vx square times Vy, which is kt over m times 0, which is 0. V, uh, x and y independent degrees of freedom so I can write it this way and uh, Vy average is equal to Vx average is equal to Vz average 0 from symmetry and part E Vx plus Bvy parentheses square average Vx plus B a constant times Vy square parenthesis square average this is vx square plus 2b vx vy plus b square vy square average value which is vx square average value plus 2b it's just a constant vx vy average value plus b square just a constant vy square average value this is kt over m as we have found this one is uh, zero because it's average value of vx times average value 
of Vy, this is zero. Uh, and here I have B squared times KT over M. So the answer is B squared plus one KT over M for this average value. And the way I have found uh, Vy square average or Vx square average is basically based on the equipartition theorem here. So uh, this result, uh, Vx square and Vy square average, these results I have obtained using the equipartition theorem. Okay, so we're looking at the mean values for a molecule in a gas. If it's at equilibrium at absolute temperature T, it's equally likely to, for it to move in plus X and minus X directions. The mean Vx component, the X component of the velocity mean value should be zero. And you can see this using Maxwell's speed distribution divided by the number of particles per volume, which gives you the probability density. Uh, so a probability multiplied by Vx integrated over all values. This is an odd times an even function. The answer is zero. Vx square bar is one half, uh, can be obtained from equipartition theorem. One half m Vx square bar is kt over m. So you can see that Vx square bar is kt over m. V square Vx average value. Because V square depends on Vx, I have to uh, write this explicitly. V square is Vx square plus Vy square plus Vz square. The Vx, Vy and Vx, Vz uh, products, they all have averages of zero because x and y, x, y and z are independent degrees of freedom. As for the average value of Vx cube, if you look at the uh, Maxwell uh, velocity component distribution divided by n multiplied by Vx cube integrated over all possible Vx values, this will be again an odd function multiplied an even function integrated in uh, all of space. This gives me zero. Uh, Vx square Vy average value is Vx square average times Vy average value because they are statistically independent. And uh, you can see that this is going to be average value of Vy is zero. So therefore it's zero. And Vx plus Vy square average value is the average value of Vx square plus 2B Vx Vy average value, which is zero because this, once again, Vx and Vy are statistically independent. The average value is zero for each one. So therefore the product has a zero average. And B square Vy square average, Vy square average we obtained using uh, the, So here I have made a mistake. So this, this is equal to 1 over 2 kT, uh, which is giving me Vx square average, Vy square average, Vz square average is kT over m. Okay, so that's the equipartition theorem. So using that theorem, I obtain kT over m plus b square kT over m for this average, which is b square plus 1 kT over M. So uh, this basically completes all the answers to uh, parts A through 